Hello. Hello, welcome. Welcome Thank everyone. You. Here we are. Looks like uh, looks like all my prep paid off. We can see a screen here that's got a website on it. This is uh, breathoflifeart.com and uh, this is where we're going to be working on one of the one of the sentient species for our uh, universe that we're building, our world that we're building, called Telefar. And um, I've been going through my editing pass of the book, The Scarred King Trilogy, and uh, realized, oh yeah, this creature is. I haven't mentioned. drawn the slack yet. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't actually designed this creature yet, and I need an illustration for it because. The, the book that we're making is super duper pooper illustrated. Many, many illustrations. Yes, it Too is. many illustrations. <laughs> um, now, when you first talked to me about the slack and they were going to be go-betweens in the ocean uh, for trade, the first thing I thought of were the Japanese spider crabs. Mm -hmm. I actually saw one in a uh, aquarium in Tokyo. And their legs are six feet long. Yes. And the body is, uh, I don't know, baby head size. And they're, they're almost shocking, you know, to see something that massive. And so, of course, on this world, we're going to make a bigger spider crab. Yeah, there you go. <coughs> Yeah, well, so so when when we're doing creature design, uh, one of the things, I mean, the the first the first thing we ask ourselves, I don't know, I don't what know if there's the an order of operations. Yourself? Good question. Well, um, I'll tell you what my second thought was. What's your second and thought? And why we I sort of put it together because you know you don't want an exact replica of a Japanese. Uh, spider crab you don't want an exact replica of somebody else's crab monster and by the way everybody you should know that from age three on Joshua's great ambition was to become a crab monster yeah since the age of three you said yes no. or a trash collector one or the other you were impressed by both might have had something to do with living in Japan and seeing lots of kaiju movies and That's TV possible. shows yeah except you were four by the time we moved there anyway Okay. Yes, you were for it. And uh, the next one I thought of were the decorator crabs because that has so many possibility for um, uh, interesting shapes and textures. Decorator crabs, depending on the species, will decorate their shells. They have little tiny, little tiny hooks in the carapace and uh, the chitin, the shell. And they will either decorate themselves with sponges mm -hmm. or with algae. Looks like urchins. And, here. and some will decorate themselves with sea anemones, which, which um, are stinging, hair you know, so that's kind of a defense. Mm -hmm. And uh, the sea anemones don't mind uh, being told to live on the back of a crab because uh, the crab tears apart food, little pieces drift by, and the sea anemones get fed too. Mm -hmm. Huh, okay, I thought that was a super awesome original idea I had, but I probably saw these in some major documentary at some point, stored it away in my head, and then pretended it was my idea later. Because yeah, that was one of the things that I wanted to do with the, with these drawings. They, so, yeah. let's, let's back up again and talk about the first thing to do. Okay. Which, uh, which uh, again, I don't actually know the order of operations here, but um, I, I feel like if I was a very disciplined creature designer, the first thing I would do is say, what is the um, the story and aesthetic function that these sentient creatures are fulfilling in the world? Okay. So they have an ecological niche, they have a social niche, they have a uh, biological niche, um, right, and one of the things that would that differentiated these from earth crabs, okay, they're sentient. Now, there's nothing in sentience that dictates 
that the sentient creature must have an aesthetic sense, must value beauty. But here's these sentient giant crabs, and I thought, why wouldn't they be decorating themselves to be pretty? Mm -hmm. So now you're claiming you had the idea to put for them to put pretty stuff on oh, themselves. Oh, no, I always knew they put stuff on them, but I was thinking oh. they could be doing it for the purpose, not of camouflage or defense, oh, gotcha, gotcha. because they're so big, yeah. but rather for um, decor. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's very neat. Um, so let, let's talk, let's, uh, for, for the viewers who aren't familiar with uh, Talifar, let's real quick just give a, a high level thing that's going on here. Uh, I've been world building this world for about 20 years and then about the last 15 years you've been helping me by writing novels in it. Um, and the novel works great as a forcing function to yes. figure out hey, how are these things actually interacting? What are these cultures like? What do they need to be like, et cetera, et cetera. These guys, these, so there's about a dozen-ish, maybe 15 sentient creatures on this planet. Uh, this planet has so many sentient creatures because- I should add them up sometime. Yeah, I mean, I have I have the list here. Um, the, the, uh, the, the, the reason all these guys are here is because uh, there are these shepherd aliens, super duper advanced a aliens. That you, that you have not illustrated yet, because right. it's kind of hard to illustrate a blob. Well, there's lots of ways to do that, but um, it, they just haven't been a focal point of a story yet. They're always in the periphery, and these guys have been in the periphery until I realized, oh wait, they're not actually in the periphery. They're actually spoken to face to face in the first part of this uh, novel. Um, the, Depending on what you call a face. Yes. Um, eyeball to eyeball. Uh, the the shepherds t uh, rehome various creatures throughout the galaxy onto planets uh, that are not going to be destroyed like uh, their home planets. Humans ended up here through some confluence of events that we'll get into. But not important. But uh, so, so the shepherds basically, they're playing a game of civilization where they want all of the all of the species that they rehome to live together in harmony which is an almost impossible task so they settle for not wiping not wiping each other out completely yes yes um, and they have various mechanisms through which they exert their will on the various cultures uh, their their primary habitat is bottom of the ocean so they don't have a lot of direct contact nor do they want a lot of direct con contact. They don't want to become gods or emperors of these people. They are, they are just, they're, they consider themselves to be ecologists and um, scientists and... Uh, A step above zookeepers. Yeah, what? Because they're civilization keepers. Yeah. They're just trying to preserve the beautiful diversity that exists in the galaxy and, you know, sometimes supernovas happen, sometimes species develop technology to destroy themselves, sometimes other species A wandering have, planet comes by. Yeah, or space-faring technology that can destroy non-space-faring creatures. Any of those scenarios, these shepherds will swoop in, scoop up what they can, and find a planet that's close enough to, for these creatures to live on. So, here we have the Schlack, who were probably homed here. We haven't come up with a backstory for everything yet. Uh, again, these stories are, are the forcing function that's kind of forcing us to come up with these things. Um, but what is important is that these guys are um, the in-between, the primary in-between for relating communication from the shepherds who live at the bottom of the ocean to the people either on the surface or to uh, the... The Varone. The Varone who are these guys are other, uh, these are amphibious guys who mostly live in the ocean. There are some that live in freshwater, but um, but these guys, uh, uh, you're working on a novel about them right now. Yeah. Um, but they don't, these guys can't get deep enough to actually talk to the shepherds at the bottom of the ocean. Um, but the people we're designing right now can. Um, and so, they have a communication network. There's deeper ones and, and less deeper ones. 
and it's interesting to tease out what kind of culture develops based on how much light and nutrients and information you have. I posited initially that the deeper ones, the, the further down you go, the kind of slower they are, you know, they're preserving calories, they communicate very slowly, they move very slowly, they don't have a lot of natural predators, uh, and as you get higher, they, they're okay. It's kind of like the city folk and the country folk sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that was my initial positing, and uh, we'll, we'll see how far it stays uh, when, when we hash it out and talk about it, and talk about, well, what are the realistic concerns they're going to have, uh, eating, sleeping, mating, cultural, culture, reproduction, I'm all assuming kind of they stuff. build their spaceships on another planet. Um, I mean, they don't need to have spaceships. Well, maybe the ones that are left on the planet to do the shepherding. But if they're running around the galaxy, they better have something to carry the species Well, there. no, th these guys... That was, that was what the book, uh, the story Dereliction was about. Yeah, I'm talking about the crabs. Oh, the crabs! Yeah, yeah they don't... No, they don't. Yeah. Hi, Darkwing Angel and Damon. Welcome, guys. Um, right, so we're trying to... Uh, and, and here's a snow cone, because I had to illustrate a snow cone for one of the... Uh, <laughs> for one of the chapter headings where Beaumark <laughs> discovers ice for the first time. Um, right, so when it comes to creature design, uh, the, the actual look of them as opposed to just vague concepts, which is what I have on the website right now. Let, uh, let's, let's go over this real quick, just at a high level. So I, you know, again, all of this is subject to change. I said uh, giant sea turtles mixed with king crabs. Uh, Man, sorry, and my head is so I stuffy. Else. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Uh, these bony people inhabit the deep seas. They are very different looking depending on the depth in which they live. Okay. Those that inhabit the dysphoric zone are tall, spindly, brightly colored. Those down in the deepest trenches are squat and pale. Uh, which is generally just, this is what we observe well, that's, on that's Earth. That's the progression on Earth, yes. Yeah. Um, let's see, the general propensity towards keeping to themselves is facilitated by their body structure. Schlacker uh, able to fold themselves up into a hard spiny lump they can also squirt a choking cloud of chemicals towards enemies if a conflict can be solved that way that is what they will always do if necessary however they have powerful claws and mandibles and are worthy opponents uh, schlack grow gardens on their shells and their regional differences keep their coats unique they are also uh, guard or they also garden larger plants which they take care of in, arra in arranging in specific aesthetic styles which vary by region yeah, and, and for that I had grids yeah. uh, that float, but they're anchored to the bottom of the ocean, and the grids are made of uh, pearlescence that right. they so, trade with the Varan whip. Yeah, the, the per pearlescence is a substance on Talifar that is extruded by Varan females. They have the ability to make this. It's If you imagine like a spider creates a web, they create this kind of this plasticine material that comes out very soft and pliable and then while it's pliable it can be shaped into anything uh, you know armor weapons uh, building materials all sorts of stuff so th this is how they can create technology without needing to form metal and that kind of Correct. stuff so they they have a lot of interaction with the schleck uh, including uh, building these grid like uh, mm -hmm. structures that the schleck can then garden on Okay, uh, their social life. Most schlack don't travel much, preferring a simple, quiet life. The lower they live, the more they are like this. Those uh, above 4,000 feet have to deal with the barbaric Varon and other large predators, uh, which, you know, uh, like, like all sentient species, there's going to be a range of them. There's not just one, you know, I'm trying to avoid the Tolkien or the Star Trek problem of like, this race is this and only this. Correct. Yeah, so. Uh, there People are... People get to vary, but nobody else does. Right. Uh, okay, so the the Deep Ones keep... Okay, the, the Deep Ones is another name for the shepherds we were talking about that, that took all these aliens here. Uh, keep inviting them to come deeper and... Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. The the deep, deep Ones, in this case, is referring to the Schlack who live deeper down. Keep inviting uh. them to come deeper and they shake their heads in confusion when refused. Like, why do you want to live up there where everything's so fast and dangerous? Uh, let's see, what are some folks saying? 
there's three streams at once you want to watch today. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, if you want to bow out, you can always watch this on YouTube tomorrow. I always post them 24 hours later. Uh, Damon says, that's what VODs are for. Uh, and Aletha says, this is the only really important one. Yes. Uh, Damon says, how Lovecraftian, the deep ones. Yeah, I probably want to change names that are specifically used in other work. This is just my kind of brainstorming right now. Uh, let's see. The tall ones think the deep ones are insufferable bores and seldom visit. However, they have always been cordial towards one another, and there are no records of interspecies warfare. For homes, they generally dig holes into soft rock and cover them with slabs of stone. Some communities have above-ground structures that are reminiscent of Stonehenge. Where the current is slow, they may stack many slabs together like a house of cards, filling in the gaps with seaweed. Uh, many are probably, I imagine, coral would be another way to yeah. kind of cement rocks together. Right. You'll have fun illustrating that in the Verone novel. Yeah. Which is number 11, by the way. You have so many. It's going to be great. Uh, many live on and around the mid-ocean mountain chains uh, near Black Smokers. So, uh, let's see. As they are closest to the Ancient Ones, the uh, which are the shepherds, I, I think Ancient Ones is another Lovecraftian term I need to excise <laughs> from our text, uh, the Schlack are filters through which information travels to them. The Schlack are the only ones who can communicate directly with the Ancient Ones, though on a limited level. I don't know if we're going to keep that or not. It's an interesting idea. Uh, generally, news will come through civilized Veron to Schlack, and finally to the Ancient Ones. From their perspective, the Ancient Ones find the Schlack amusing little people, always buzzing around, talking quickly, and never stopping to think, when in fact the Schlack move and speak about ten times slower than humans. Uh, schlack culture, especially among the Deep Ones, is heavily influenced by the Ancient Ones, aka the uh, Shepherds. The Schlack see them as great teachers and prophets, though they never ask for anything but wisdom from the Ancient Ones. They often bring gifts of whale carcasses to them as signs of appreciation. Okay, and then I have Nothing it here. Nothing says appreciation like a dead whale. That's right. Um, I have them anywhere between a, a wingspan of 10 feet and 30 feet, um, 200 to 800 pounds, uh, quite strong, very slow, uh, very intelligent, uh, very dexterous, super tough. Um, they can see really well in the dark and just average in the light. Uh, they can hear well, they can smell super well, they can taste super well, and they can uh, grow to be 300 years old. I, I imagine I could probably play with those numbers. A, a lot of, like, I'm thinking of tortoises that live to over 100 years old. Yeah. and some, some. The, a lot of sea animals. There's some that are over 200. Yeah, so I wouldn't mind bumping that up a bit. Um, I've got about 2 million on Talifar. Again, this is all just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. Uh, let's see, Damon says, Hey, Dory, speaking whale is like the schlack. Uh, and I haven't seen the Dory movie yet. Hey, thanks for subscribing, AJ Bucky. You're right, this is the only important channel. So I'm glad you subscribed to prove that. Uh, regions, they live in the deep oceans, uh, politics, we've got theocracies and communism, uh, monotheism. Uh, is that Dory in Finding Dory or in Finding Nemo? I assume he's talking about uh, Finding Dory, but I don't know. Oh no, actually in Finding Nemo she does talk to whales, doesn't she? She talks really slow. Um, yeah. Uh, but yes, that's that's the idea. Is you got these little these little faster creatures who are trying to communicate with these giant creatures who will take years to to you know say something really important to each other. Uh, the the deep ones, the the shepherds. Um, they're capable of speaking quicker as needed, uh, but they they have super duper 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 long lifespans. Through technology, they're able to regenerate their bodies almost infinitely. So, um, let's see. Special abilities. They've got a protective shell, ink, and huge claws. So, um, and AJ Baki can now Scola. Yay! We've got so many Scolas now. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's, that's what we're thinking for the Schlack right now. 
Um, okay, now I want to talk about design, uh, visual design process. Yes. Um, so sometimes what I like to do, and this usually happens because I'm just in a position where this uh, naturally happens, uh, such as last week at work, there was a fire alarm, so we all had to go outside. And I always have my sketchbook with me, so I sat outside for half an hour and I, I sketched these guys real quick. Now, what that means is that I didn't do any research. Um, and what research means to me is two things, uh, two main things, two branches. Uh, one branch is a look at nature and mm -hmm. what's really cool in nature and what I want to combine uh, elementally to, to do that. So when I do it without that part of the research, I end up with just vaguely what I remember about crabs. Um, the other branch is what have other people done with this theme? Uh, because again, I've seen a lot of media. I wanted to be a crab monster when I was a kid. Um, all of those things stuck in the back of my brain and they come out when I just, when I do visual vomit onto the page, it's just whatever happens to be in the closet collecting dust ends up on the page. And often that will be stuff that people have already done before. So here's an example. Ideas float in the air. I mean, when we named yeah. you Joshua, nobody else was naming their kid Joshua. Hmm. And then of course you fang hundreds. Yes. Everywhere you go. <laughs> uh, so here is uh, here's the na the nature side of things. Hey, let's see what's happening in in nature. Um, all these cool things. And then here's what's happening in popular media. Uh, this was the first one I, I thought of, was the Fallout 4 Meyer Lurks. Um, I think when I wrote a, a crab mixed with a sea turtle, this is probably what I was thinking of. Mm. Um, because they've got kind of a, a boy, this is, this is not taking me to the picture, is it? There's the mirror lurk. And... Yeah, okay. I wanted it big. Okay. So here is a Meyer Lurk, and it's got big old claws, and it's got a, a turtle shell on top, and scary little face. Um, and it's been in uh, at least two Fallout games, so it's had a variety of iterations on it. Oh, here's some good concept art of it so we can oh, see okay. all the things was, they thought I was about to say that doesn't work with the legs that they've got but there's more behind so yeah. okay so they're kind of these hunched creatures uh looks like they could they can hunch up very well looks like this one has lots of cruft on it like a decorator crab um looks like they did some concepts where they had it more lobster like um but yeah i think this is pretty much the the classic one that is stuck in my mind. It's kind of like a, a quadru quadruped with uh, all these additional little arms and legs. Uh, and for whatever reason, the king of them is a, is a swamp thing. I don't know why, but it is. Uh, let's look at other just crab monsters in general. In Guild Wars 2, we have a crab monster that is, um, isn't there a way to just see the image? For some reason, it's defaulting to taking me to the page instead of going right to the image. It didn't used to do that, I thought. Uh, one thing that almost every crab monster that has ever been designed is that they do the the scythe claws where they just come to a tip which is pretty much what crabs do it's something that i've seen in so much creature design that i i kind of just want to avoid it because it's so prevalent so it's cool you want fingers at the end not necessarily um but it's just it's just something i'm holding in the back of my mind uh let's see on in Guild Wars, our crab monsters are called Karka. And it looks like Karka is a real type of crab. Is this real? I don't think that's real. 
Is that fan on it? I think that's a that's a baby Karka from Guild Wars 2, I think, unless again we, we steal names from real things all the time. <laughs> so it's hard to know. Uh, let's put Well I doubt there's any combination of letters that doesn't mean something somewhere. Okay, here. Not, no, that's not what I want to do at all. I want to just look at that picture without going through the website. Open image and new tab. Oh, there you go. So that's kind of a alienish creature, and that also that doesn't have the scythe claws. It has little, little claws at the tip of every arm. Um, I believe the, the full grown version of it has scythe arms. Oh, maybe not. Boy, this is a really bad picture. It's terrible lighting. Did you do that? Uh, I worked on a map that these guys live in. I did not take that screenshot or design the creature. Uh, Darkwing Angel says, multi twitch to the rescue. Oh man, you're watching two twitches at once? That sounds, well, depending on how much people are talking, I suppose. That could be great or awful. Okay, so. Yeah, these are just really hard to make out. They kind of have a dangling body with the arms coming down on top. I, I think that's my favorite thing about them. It's just kind of a unique structure. Because um, most crabs have. Legs on the side. Yeah, well, coming out from the bottom or the side, yeah. Uh, so that's something to consider is. Where the where the parts are coming from? Oh, that's just a tiny image. Uh, that's two crap monsters. Similar to the Meyer Lurk. That's an interesting mix of humanoid with it. Probably don't want to go that direction. Don't, what is that from? Attack of Crab Monster. Mix of humanoid again. I'm not seeing much kaiju here. I also don't know if that's how you spell kaiju. Uh, I think oh. it's K. Yeah, there you go. It's fun to have these these interesting, elongated, you know, weird shapes. On, you know, it works especially well for for crabs since they've got all those protuberances anyway. And you know, because they're supported by water, they can have more extravagant structures that right. uh, creatures like Earth can have. Oh wait, look at, I like that one that looks sort of like a cross between a jumping spider and a, uh, a crab. That's pretty neat. Kid mice, and crab. Oh, for, that, those are the things that dropped off of the monster in Pacific Rim, I guess. Oh. I thought... Maybe, maybe I ought to go watch that movie. It's fun. I like it. Just take some nausea pills first, because it's all shaky cam all the oh, time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so they, 
This looks like some of the toys I was playing with as a kid. But this is like all the new movie, all the new science fiction now. They don't have light bulbs. Uh, uh, all the science mean? fiction that's filmed now yeah, on t television, it's all dark. Oh, like very dark. Like Killjoys, the, the new uh, Star, Trek. Star, Star Trek thing. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I thought, who, who, who built a, a bridge with a black floor, black walls, black <laughs> ceiling, and no light bulbs? Someone who wants a very dramatic ship, I guess. <laughs> they, they definitely did not want to be like the next generation, which was all completely evenly lit like a soap opera with beige and, and white everywhere. There's a interesting use of um Ammonite shell ammonite, structures. Yes. Which, which, uh, which has the golden ratio, which is why it's such an attractive shape to us. Right. Damon says TNG had mood lighting in the canteen. Did they? Where, where Guinan served drinks? That area? Um. Deep Space Nine had a lot of dark areas. Uh, Aletha says, are you designing more jumping puzzles to make people rage quit? Uh, no, <laughs> I'm right now designing racetracks, actually. People oh. never rage quit a racetrack? Yeah, they might, but it seems less likely. Uh, David says, it can't make me rage quit if I don't play. Cap's head. Uh, that thing is creepy. A goth. Uh, oh, a goth would design a, uh, a, a Star Trek bridge to be all black. That is, that is true. Alright, so this is another really useful thing to do is just silhouettes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I'm going to jump into doing that because that's just a super fast way to start uh, finding forms that that seem both original and and fit what we're trying to accomplish, et cetera, et cetera. So. Without <laughs> accidentally doing an guy. exact copy of right. someone else's. So yeah. I is it, okay. I, I notice I, only a few of them are using the almost antenna eyes of crabs. Yeah, that is interesting. Uh, that, that so few of them do that because that is a very unique crab thing. That's neat. Um, the I, I yeah I would like to to use that for sure. I mean it's already written into the book. We might as well do it. Um, here's one. I was assuming. Makes them very, very alien, very funny looking. Um, yeah, they like to embed them like spider eyes, which I, I guess a lot of crabs do have their eyes like that. Let's. I don't let's think so. Look at a so. spider crab, for instance. Uh, I guess Google crab eyes. No, it looks like they pretty much have two. Wow, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, huh. Some of them are shorter, yeah. closer. That I feel like they have, you know, photos, photosynthesis eyes uh, in other parts of their shell, usually running along, you know, somewhere in the I think the you're bridge. confusing it with the hexacrabs of my novel. Uh, well, maybe. They had sight uh, opercula. Well, I don't think these are from your book. No. Let's see what a closer look at. Oh, these are is that horseshoe. Uh, I think that's a horseshoe crab. Um, right. So, so another way to make your design original is to mix in other types of creatures that other people haven't already mixed in. Um, 
because these are aliens, we could mix in literally anything. We could we could well, do a monkey. Well, anything that a body structure a... will support, that physics yeah. will support. Um, we probably wouldn't put feathers on it, for instance. But it could have feather-like antennae. Yeah, there are there are lots think of think of the feather worms. Yeah, that's true. There are feather worms. Come to think of it, we could put feathers. But if those we are to. those are filter eaters. But if if that was, you know, you have to think what would be the function. Right. Yeah, I guess there is lots of plumage on things. But they're not bird feathers. They're, yeah. they're correct there. But they're practically bird feathers. <laughs> Aren't they? No. So that's an interesting thought. Um, something to think about. Let me, let me write this down. Okay. Uh, I'm going to write a list of things that I have not seen on crab monsters before. Well, you've not seen those. You've yep. not seen them. How they, you know, those worms, the feather worms, um, they do this, right. and that would be an interesting thing to have. You know, it could be he could have a decoration of feather worms if you didn't want it to be his actual right feathers. Bloop. Hey, cool. One thing I, uh, that is kind of interesting to me is this thought that if they're they're growing these kind of planty gardens on themselves for for decoration, uh, you know, most of the things that grow in the ocean have some kind of effect on the environment around them. Um, it seems to me if they know uh, they could specialize themselves to where you could have a knight in armor and you could have the dandy and fancy clothes and they would be fulfilling two different functions in the society. I kind of have them pretty atomic right now, but there's no reason they couldn't be a little more social. Um, I, I, I'm not thinking of them as having kingdoms per se. They're more like, I'm thinking of- uh, Communes. Yeah, or, or like Greenland where there were, you know, a little family household, and then another, you know, hundred miles away is another. <laughs> and every year they get together for their thing, and they, you know, set policy or whatever as need be. And then, uh, so, so in the story in the Scarred King trilogy, uh, one of them comes up onto the beach and talks to these island dwellers and says, "You keep dumping your crap in the ocean, and we're tired of it." Also, do you have any silver? We'll trade you for silver. So that's the kind of thing that that you know they get together at some point and they're like, "This is this is obnoxious. Do something about it." They elect someone to go talk to him, and that's kind of how trade happens. Well, that actually uh, makes sense for a, a, a um, crab monster. Yeah. Uh, Darkwing Angel says, I wonder if the stock eyes aren't used as much because it makes the creature a little more funny slash friendly looking and a lot of the creatures try to get into the creepy scary side. Yeah, that would be my guess. Uh, you know, having a bunch of eyes on the head is spider-like and humans are almost all allergic to spiders. Emotionally speaking. Well, you saw that one set of elongated eyes with the funny looking pupil and the little spike on top. If you had a number of spikes, oh, that would look like eyelashes then, wouldn't it? I mean, I, I kind of did that a little bit right here. Okay. And was was that an eye? Yeah. Oh. These are just little... Yeah, tell us what the parts are here. So, so in this, in these images here, I've got uh, just kind of the... the what, what are the plants that kind of have those dangling noodle th it's some kind of anemone or something okay um but uh, you know that they, they, they would be essentially t like tongues like, slash like jellyfish where where something yeah. gets tangled in it and then it gets drawn up yeah okay let me add jellyfish um, oh 
what, tendrils? Yeah, uh, there's an official name <laughs> for some reason I'm blanking on that too. Um, yeah, and then the eyes on stocks. This ends up looking, uh, let me get it in front there. This guy ends up looking like, uh, I'm scared. Oh, oh this guy. Yeah, then was it wasn't purposeful, but after I drew it, I was like, oh, that's the don't hug me, I'm scared guy. Uh, anyway. Hmm. Yeah, I, I experimented with these little nubbins, and yeah, it kind of looks like, like eyelashes. eyelashes. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah, and then the, I, I'm, I was just I doing... I guess going back to the single spike would be better. Yeah, so here's uh, one that's got just more of those elongated ones. There, there's also no reason not to do multiple stalks with multiple eyes. Mm-hmm, um, mm -hmm. And then... That looks almost more tentacle-y. Yeah. Uh, sort, of, sort of reminiscent of the eyes on slugs. Yeah. Let's look at crab eyes again. I smell... That was the one that I thought was a candidate. Yeah. It's very interesting. Oh, look at this claw shape. That is... Yeah, another thing I want to do is is make their... Well, whatever their manipulators are, I would like them to be finer than a giant, you know, just... Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> claw. That is an interesting claw. And his eyes go straight up. Yeah, point. Now, we have to be careful, we don't want to look like Mr. Crab on Spongebob. Yes. These are kind of Mr. Crab eyes. Um. Huh. Very long thing poking out of the top. Yeah, one thing uh, I'm noticing is there's a lot of very, like, uh, they look rigid stalks um, as opposed to snake-like, you know, uh, uh, tendril of images. Yeah, or I'd like to see the eyes on a box crab. How do they incorporate them when they form themselves into a, a solid box? I love box crabs. They're just cool. I don't see any box crabs. Oh, that might be one up here. Let me, take, let me take eyes off of there. So they they put their their arms together, uh -huh. like uh, yeah, there. That's really yeah. interesting. And they kind of I assume they pull pull their eye in a bit. Coloration, you know, the variations they have. Like they go, like that polka dot one. I wonder if the stock eyes are. Oh, well, we already read that. We're kind of looking. You gave me commercials, my heart is broken. When did you give me commercials? Oh, that little side thing that says join up.
you know, we just got booted off for some reason. I'm not sure why. 